Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, demo of the appointment scheduling module. Uh, I'm Shruti Sridhar. I work with the Bumni team in ThoughtWorks. So uh, this is a series of videos that we would be doing for this new feature we've introduced as part of the release 0.90. Uh, so uh, we're going to have a six part video where uh, the first three parts are going to focus more on the user guide and uh, parts four, five and six are going to focus on the configurations and setting up of the appointment scheduling module. Uh, please note that this module is different from the OpenMRS module uh, appointment scheduling module that was there earlier uh, that is no longer supported and is not part of the Bumni distro. This new appointment scheduling module will be uh, the one which will be supported going forward. Uh, with that introduction, let's move forward. So uh, the first three parts of the user guide would be focusing on uh, creating and editing services. Uh, it'll be, we'll be showing you how to create and manage appointments. We'll be talking about the different views that are available within the module. And uh, thirdly, we'll be talking about how to manage the status of those appointments. So before we go on to the demo, we would like to define a few terms uh, that we will be using across the appointment scheduling module. The first one being a service. A service, uh, very simply put, is that entity which is offered to a patient by a provider in a healthcare setting. Uh, so uh, it could be a general consultation with a physician, uh, it could be a specialized consultation like with a diabetes specialist, uh, it could be a surgery uh, in the operation theater, it could be some counseling session, or it could be even uh, an x-ray or a CT scan. So it's essentially in, in the context of an appointment scheduling module, it's that um, service is something against which you actually provide an appointment. So obviously this varies from different healthcare settings to others. So, um, uh, so, but again, what is most important is that uh, a service is the most basic entity that you will have to define in the system against which you will be providing appointments for a patient. Uh, moving on to the next term. The next term is service appointment types. Uh, so these are further granular categories under a service. So we could have multiple such appointment types under one service. For example, let's take diabetes as a service and under which you could have different types of assessments like a patient could come for an initial assessment a follow-up assessment or some sort of nutritional counseling so you could have such granular categories under one service uh, but this service appointment types are not mandatory uh, in fact these are configurable and if an implementation chooses not to have this they can turn it off um, the videos on configuration and the documentation uh, will explain how to turn the services off if required. The third term that we would like to discuss is a speciality. Typically, a speciality is a branch of service, a branch, sorry, a branch of medicine that is being provided in a hospital. You could think of it more like the departments in a hospital. So uh, you could have uh, an oncology department, you could have a radiology, you could have orthopedics. So these are basically the broad umbrella under which you would offer the different services in a hospital. Uh, for example, uh, you could have an endocrinology and diabetes uh, specialty under which you could have the diabetes clinic and the thyroid clinic running. Uh, similarly, something for oncology where you would offer uh, chemotherapy, uh, radiation therapy, etc. So the idea of having a speciality is to provide a, a broader grouping of the different services, have um, multi, probably have uh, you be useful for reporting and operation purposes. Uh, and uh, this is also configurable. If uh, implementation chooses not to have specialities, uh, they can turn this off. Um, so it is not mandatory to define a speciality uh, in the appointment scheduling module. All right, so uh, let's move on to part one of the uh, video series. Uh, so here we will be showing how to create and edit services. Uh, let me quickly move on to the application. So I'm going to log in as a user. So if you see here, once I log in, I land on the home page and I see an appointment scheduling uh, widget here. Uh, this 
uh, will be visible only to those users who have access to this app. And uh, within this app also, there are various levels of access that is provided based on the privileges the users are assigned. Uh, we, you can find more information about this on Wiki as to how to assign users uh, different privileges. For now, uh, the user I'm logged in as uh, has full access to the entire app and will be able to do all the actions uh, allowed in the app. So let us first go into this tab called as the admin tab. Uh, here is where we will actually be, in, uh, we'll be creating and editing services. So um, if you see here, there is an add new service button. I'm going to click on that. Uh, this will open an add new service screen here where I can define new services. So let's stick to the same example we were talking about of uh, say a diabetes clinic. So I'm going to create a service called as diabetes clinic. And uh, there are different fields here. Let's talk about each of them. Uh, this is where you would actually uh, describe a field here, uh, uh, describe the service here. Say I'm going to call this diabetic PD services. Um, offered in the hospital or whatever you choose to describe your service as. Uh, the next field we have is duration. Uh, duration is basically uh, the amount of time that you would take to offer a particular service to the patient. For example, let's say that on an average um, in the diabetes clinic, a patient spends about 20 minutes. So I spend about 20 minutes for each consultation that, I, that happens in the diabetes clinic. And then I have another field called as the start and the end times. So this is more of, uh, you can think of it as the working hours of the clinic. Say the diabetes clinic runs only from 9 a.m. in the morning to about 12 p.m. in the noon. So I can pull, push that here. I can uh, enter that here. Uh, the significance of this is that when you're actually booking appointments, these validations uh, kick in. So if I'm going to book an appointment for the diabetes clinic, it will warn me when I'm booking uh, at times outside of these, what I've mentioned here. And also, if you see, uh, this is about three hours of um, availability and each of the appointments being of 20 minutes. So that's about nine appointments that you could cover within this period. So this sort of calculation also kicks in when you book appointments where you will be uh, warned if you're booking over nine slots or uh, it will also tell you how many slots are remaining for you to book. So that's the significance of uh, the start time and the duration. Uh, there is another field here called as the max load. Uh, so this max load is a, a way of specifying the, the limit up to of the number of patients that you can actually take. For example, if I say 10, it means that uh, given this duration of 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., I can at the most take 10 patients. Uh, in that case, uh, when you're actually booking appointments, it will warn you saying that you're um, moving uh, above the cap of 10 appointments. So this is also an indication to the user um, as to how many appointments you can book in a given slot. Um, then you have a speciality field, uh, as I had already explained about a speciality earlier. Uh, so these are some of the specialities defined in a system. I'm going to tag this particular diabetes clinic to endocrinology and diabetes here. And here I have a location field, which is basically uh, where the service will be actually offered physically to the uh, patient in the hospital or the healthcare setting. Here I'm going to click on diabetic OPD. Uh, more information on how to um, create specialities or tag certain locations as appointment locations will be covered in the uh, configuration videos. And I have another field here called as the label color. So this helps me assign a particular color to a service, which will be later on visible when I'm booking appointments in a calendar so, so that I can differentiate visually across different services. So that's a very basic setup of a service uh, that I can save. Um, now let's go back and look at it again. So if I have to go to a service and edit it again, I click on this edit button. So I here have the diabetes clinic service that I created just now. I'm gonna click on edit. And let's now look at two more sections here, which is the add service appointment type and service availability. 
So let's talk about ad service appointment type. Here um, is where you can define the further granular categories against uh, or under a service. For example, I have an initial assessment, uh, which takes me about 30 minutes. So I can say initial assessment, 30 minutes and say add. So it gets added here. Um, I can say I have a follow-up assessment, which takes about uh, 10 minutes each, and I say add, right? Um, so uh, please note that the moment you have these subtypes and their durations, then this duration on top gets overridden. So when you're actually booking appointments against uh, a particular subtype under the service, this particular duration will be uh, taken and not the, uh, the duration on top. Then let's go to service availability. So service availability uh, is basically a way to define further um, details into this time that you've given. Say for example, um, this 9 to 12 p.m. Uh, is applicable only on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I run the diabetes clinic only on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I'll be able to specify that here. Say that 9 to 12 p.m on uh, sorry Mondays and Tuesdays and I say add if you see the moment I add this uh, these fields here get disabled because now uh, this is what would be uh, considered over this um, also I can specify that on the other days uh, say the clinic runs from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, on say Thursdays and Fridays right so once I add this I should be able to save this. So if you see, I get a warning. So whenever a service is edited, uh, it warns the user that they are editing a service. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, they do not make any changes that would affect the appointments. Um, so it is expected that all the service setup, the subtypes under it, the availability is all uh, defined uh, on field much before it's actually put uh, into use. Uh, so this will probably be a one-time setup of services and their availabilities. So I get a message saying services saved successfully. Um, so that is the uh, first part of the uh, video where we wanted to uh, show how to create and edit services. Uh, one last thing I would like to show is how to delete a service. Say for example, uh, a particular service is no longer offered in the hospital or it was created by mistake, um, then it is possible to delete a service as well. So there is a delete option. For example, I no longer offer a test uh, service in the hospital. I can delete it and say confirm it. I will be able to delete it. Uh, but one thing to note is that if there are appointments booked against the service in the future, uh, then it will ask the user to uh, first cancel those appointments or reschedule those uh, before they, it allows you to actually delete the service. So that's one validation that's put in place. Um, so that was the first part of the video. Uh, here is uh, some useful links that uh, we would like to share. Uh, for more detailed documentation, please visit the uh, Bumni Wiki, uh, where all this information is available under the user guide and the feature guide. Um, we have uh, the demo environments, uh, demo.mybumni.org and demo-us.mybumni.org, uh, where you can play around with the appointment scheduling app. We also have forums where you can raise questions. If you have any doubts, questions, clarifications, reach out to us on the OpenMRS talk in the Bumni channel. Um, we also have the Bumni Slack, uh, which is uh, uh, in that you can ping us on the community channel and uh, get your uh, doubts clarified. Uh, thank you.